Hi, fourth and fifth graders. My name is Sabrina Kovacs, and I'm a teacher at Seattle Public Schools. I'm super proud to be able to deliver your last math lesson of the year. Congratulations, you did it. It is summer. On behalf of all the teachers and leaders and people that work in the district, I want to say that we are so proud of you. You have persevered throughout this weird, weird school year. You've been doing your work. You've been logging on. You've been working with your families and friends online and doing what it takes to get to the end of the school year. We are very, very proud of you. We hope that you continue learning throughout the summer. There are so many summer learning opportunities happening through the district and through other organizations across the city as well. Your parents and families have received communication about summer learning opportunities, so make sure to talk with them about it. It would be a great idea to stay involved so that you can start next year strong, whether you're going to be in fifth or sixth grade. This week's game is called Target Number or Horseshoes. Second and third graders, you're being asked to use money to play the game. Fourth and fifth graders, you're being asked to use dice and cards or just dice or just cards. It doesn't matter which grade you are in, you can use money or dice or cards and you will be able to play. You also need some paper and a pen. Now this game, whether you're calling it horseshoes or target number, you can play by yourself, you can play with one other person, or you can play with more than two people. Just depends how many people you've got around who wanna play math games with you. These games are excellent ways to really practice our mental math skills and to be flexible in our thinking, to use what we know to figure out what we don't know. Fourth and fifth graders, to play your target number game, you need dice and a deck of cards, something to write with and something to write on. You wanna remove all the face cards because they don't have any value in this game. And you wanna make sure you shuffle your deck a few times. You're gonna start by waiting for the helicopter to fly over. You're gonna start by rolling two dice. Now you can see in the picture that one dice has six and one dice has one. So my target number can either be 16 or 61. Then you draw four cards. I drew three, five, three, and four. And then I started using the digits to begin making equations to get me as close as possible to the target number. In this case, I decided to add 35 plus 34, which got me 69 which is eight away from the target number. Whatever amount away from the target number you get, that is how many points you get. In this game, you want as few points as possible because you wanna get as close to the target number as possible. Let's look at another example. On another roll, I got two digits on my dice. I got one and three. So I can either make 31 or 13. The cards that I got were 2, 4, 6, and 8. So I want you to think about that for a moment. What would you do? Would you try to make 31 or would you try to make 13? Would you be adding or would you be subtracting? I might start with something like 68 take away 42 and that is going to give me 26. Now 26 is hmm, five away from 31. So that gives me five points. But maybe I don't want to do that. Maybe I can get closer to 31 or to 13. Hmm, what if I do 84, take away uh, 62. Let's see, that will give me 22. Uh-oh, that's seven away from 31. And it's also nine away from 13. So I don't wanna do this one. 
I want the less amount of points, not the most amount of points. Try using my example and see if you can come closer to either 31 or 13 using the digits 2, 4, 6, or 8. There are two alternative ways to play horseshoes or the target number game, and those are close to 100 or close to zero. So really the only difference is that zero or 100 are your target numbers. So you could add, subtract, multiply, or divide as extra challenges to try and get to 100 or to zero. And however far away you are from those two numbers, that's how many points you get. The player with the least points wins. There are two big ideas that will help you solve the math tasks in your packets, whether you're in second, third, fourth, or fifth grade this week. These ideas are useful in mathematics and they're useful in real life. The first big idea is using what you know to figure out what you don't. Sometimes we look at a problem and we don't know what to do. We don't know how to solve it. A good first step is to just stop and ask yourself, what do I know? And then go from there. It's also important to focus on what is the problem asking you to solve. Do you have to find a part? Do you have to find a whole? Do you have to generate a question? Is it asking for an equation? What is it asking for exactly? Another way to use what you know to figure out what you don't, and this is especially helpful this week for the fourth and fifth graders, is using whole numbers to solve problems that have fractions and decimals as examples so that you really are focusing on the process and you feel confident when you can do it using whole numbers and that will help you solve some of the math tasks that have to do with decimals or fractions. Now thinking about parts and wholes is super important, again, in math and in real life. We need to know how things are connected to one another, how parts connect together to create a whole, whether or not a problem is giving us the parts or giving us the whole, and we have to know what we're trying to solve for. So are we trying to find an unknown part or are we trying to find a total? All of these questions are good ways to approach your work. Fourth and fifth graders, here's one of the tasks in your packet this week. So we've got a word problem and it's asking us to draw a bar model or a rectangle diagram to show that we understand it and how we solved it. So let's start by reading. Princess had a large collection of basketball cards. She decided to give half of them to her friend, Aaron, and a fourth of them to her brother. She still has 75 cards left. How many cards did she start with? Hmm. So clearly this is not a question that you can just come up with an answer for. This is a question we have to be really careful about. So I'm going to start by identifying the parts and the holes. So I know she had a large collection of basketball cards, and it's asking me how many cards she started with. So what that means is that I don't know what the whole is. I have no idea. This question is asking us to find the whole, and it's giving us some parts. So I'm going to start with drawing a bar model, and please excuse how wonky it is. It's not straight, and I don't know what my whole is worth. Now I'm going to erase this part right here because I'm probably going to need the space. So I don't know how much it's worth, but I do know a few things. Let's see. I know she decided to give half of them to her friend. So half of them to her friend, that's one part. And then if I keep reading, I know she gave a fourth of them to her brother. And if I continue reading, I know that she still has 75 cards left. So this problem is giving us three separate parts. Now I know what half means, and I also know what fourth means, and I also know what 75 means. So I'm going to start with the first part given. She gave half of them to her friend Aaron. 
So I'm just going to cut this guy in half. And I'm going to say right here, these went to Aaron. Hmm. Okay. Then it says she gave a fourth of them to her brother. Well, I know that a fourth is half of a half. So I'm going to cut this half in half. And I'm going to say this fourth went to her bro. That's all I'm going to write there because it's kind of small. And then I'm going to, so I'm keeping track here. I'm just going to put a check mark here and a check mark here. And then it says she has 75 cards left. So I'm going to say she's got 75 cards left. Hmm. How many cards did she start with? Look at the bar model. Think about how we've labeled and divided it up into the parts. Think about how those parts come together to make your whole and start doing some math to figure out how many cards the princess has left. Here's another task in the fourth and fifth grade packet. This one is about area. And we see in the example that you've got some shaded figures and some not shaded figures. We also know what the perimeter is of each individual unit in the grid. So by this time, all of you know how to find area and perimeter of regular rectangles. And some of you might even know how to find area and perimeter of other composite figures or even of triangles. But here, we have to figure out if the total area of the rectangles matches the area of the shaded figure. So think about the parts, think about the whole, think about what you know, think about what you don't know, take notes, ask yourself questions, and see what you get. I hope this lesson is helpful for you as you complete your work this week and hopefully learn a couple of new things before the last day of school. If you need help, please contact your teacher. Um, I wanted to leave you with this little um, saying from Winnie the Pooh. You are braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, and smarter than you think. I want all of you to carry that with you this summer, into next year, and into the future. It's a really interesting time in our world right now. We have a lot of problems that need to be fixed. We have medical mysteries, and we need people like you to solve them. We have injustice. We have people who aren't treated fairly. We have rights that need to be affirmed and established, and we need to work together to make everyone in our country feel braver than they believe, stronger than they seem, and smarter than they think. Take care of yourselves.